If you don't know this already, digitizing is a fundamental aspect of machine embroidery that can make or break your garment. However, many embroiderers actually outsource this vital process because they fear that it will take too long to master. While there's certainly a learning curve when it comes to digitizing, learning digitizing is no more difficult than learning any other new skill. So in today's episode, I'm going to share with you a few basic do's and don'ts of digitizing so that you know what common mistakes to look out for and avoid to ensure the best embroidery results possible. All right, before we dive into today's topic, if you're new to this channel, my name is Henry Ma, I'm the CEO of Recoma, and I've helped thousands of entrepreneurs start and grow in the custom apparel industry. If you enjoy content like this, make sure to smash that like button to give this video a thumbs up and consider subscribing to our channel so you keep up to date with new videos about embroidery, printing, and the custom apparel industry in general as soon as they're released. Let's start first by taking a look at why every embroiderer should know some basic digitizing. If you know how to digitize your designs in-house, you can offer better turnaround times. This allows you to control more of the digitizing process on your own instead of outsourcing that to a third party. You no longer have to rely on someone else to make these changes and they might be tied up with something else and might not be able to get to your job on time. The second benefit of doing digitizing in-house is obviously being able to keep that profit potential. On average, customers will pay 20, 30, even upwards of 50 to $60 for a simple design digitized to their looks and style. If you know how to make these simple designs in-house and make these simple edits, you can maintain that profit potential for yourself. Learning how to digitize also makes you a better embroiderer overall because now you know the intricacies and nuances of what makes quality embroidery and digitizing is a huge part of that. Last Lastly, you should really consider digitizing on your own because of the fact that if you already purchased a Recoma embroidery machine or are thinking of getting one, the Chroma digitizing software comes along with your embroidery machine package. By not learning how to digitize, you're essentially missing out on the full potential of the package you just purchased. This also adds an additional revenue stream for your business by providing these design and digitizing services so that you can expand your services to your clients. Let's talk about a few of the do's and don'ts to know and to avoid to be successful with digitizing. In terms of the first thing to do is to make sure you digitize with your garment in mind. Before you begin to digitize your design, you need to understand what type of garment you're trying to embroider on so that you can tailor the digitizing accordingly to that garment. Digitizing needs to be adjusted and accommodated for different types of garments. For example, if you're embroidering on a flat item, such as a t-shirt or a polo shirt, it's going to be very different than embroidering on a cap, for example. When you're embroidering on a flat item like a t-shirt or a polo shirt, it's not curved such as the front panel on a cap or a hat, and that can cause differences in your embroidery process and therefore your digitizing. A common rule of thumb that a lot of embroiderers use when it comes to digitizing on caps is to make sure that the digitized design goes from bottom up and inside out. This is to ensure as few needle breaks and thread breaks as possible when it comes to the embroidery process, as well as making sure there's no puckering on the cap when the design is finished. Mm. Other things to keep in mind is the material of the garment that you're embroidering on. If you're embroidering on stretchy or knit type fabrics, you wanna make sure that your digitizing is adjusted accordingly so that you don't have any issues such as loss of registration and puckering on these stretchier fabrics. The second do to keep in mind when it comes to digitizing is to make sure you digitize with the right sequence in mind. A digitized design is essentially a blueprint that tells your machine how to embroider the design and in what sequence do you want it to embroider. As such, the sequence of your design when it comes to embroidery is crucial to make sure that the design comes out correctly. If the sequence is not done correctly, it can sometimes cause loss of registration and therefore come out with a distorted and poorly stitched design. This is especially true if you're incorporating multiple decorating techniques into one design, such as applique. The sequence of digitizing is especially important an applique because you need to know where to place your applique fabric as well as having digitizing done so that the stitches can stabilize the applique fabric that you just placed onto the garment. We actually have a video on this channel that goes into detail on the process of digitizing for an applique design. So if you're interested to check out how that process is done and the nuances that makes that work, make sure to check it out in the card above and in the link below. 
The last thing you want to keep in mind is do consider the stitch angle when it comes to digitizing your design. You want to make sure that the design is digitized in a way where it takes into consideration the different possible angles that make the design come together. Incorporating different stitch angles in your design will help prevent the loss of registration by keeping your design from pulling all in the same direction. Not only that, but incorporating different stitch angles in your design will help create interesting patterns and textures as well. All right, now that we covered the do's, let's talk about a few don'ts and mistakes to avoid. First off, don't rely solely on auto digitizing programs. Most digitizing software programs will come with an auto digitizing feature that can convert a design into a digitized format. While these might be helpful for simple designs, they're not meant for more complex designs that might require some manual digitizing. If you solely rely 100% on the auto digitizing feature when it comes to digitizing your designs, you won't really find the mistake in the digitizing until you actually embolder it. While the designs might might look great on the screen, when you actually embolder it, there might be issues that you can't foresee if you don't know what to look for. What I recommend to a lot of embolderers is to use the auto digitizing function to get you started, but still know digitizing basics so that you can control some of the digitizing by doing manual digitizing. Secondly, don't ignore the density when it comes to digitizing. Density is essentially the distance between individual stitches in your design. If the density is too high, it will increase the time to embolder your project, or worse, it will create more thread breaks because all the threads are bunched together. Higher density can also create puckering, as I mentioned before, on different types of fabrics, especially stretchier ones, when all the threads are sinking in to one particular spot. On the other hand, having too low of a density in your design will create gaps in your design and therefore have the background fabric show through your design. That wouldn't look great either and creates a less professional look in your finished product. All right, the last thing to avoid is don't have too many jump stitches in your digitized design. Jump stitches occur when the needle has to travel from one area of the design to the other without making a trim or a cut in the thread and drags the thread along. This can definitely create issues in the embroidery process and make your design look less professional when you have these long stitches that are dragged across your design. In the end, to clean up these jump stitches, you'll have to trim them manually and spend more time in the cleanup process after the embroidery is done. The easy way to avoid having jump stitches in your design is to make sure you embed a trim function in that portion of the design after it finishes embroidering. Finally, another pro tip to keep in mind is that if you must have a jump stitch in your design, make sure that the jump stitch is longer rather than shorter so that it makes your cleanup process easier because it allows you more room to actually go in there and trim the actual thread in the jump stitch with a pair of scissors. All right, you guys, that's it for us for today. If you're interested to learn more about digitizing and take your digitizing game to the next level, we do offer live training classes for our Chroma digitizing software as part of our all-inclusive embroidery machine packages. If you're a Recoma customer, you can go ahead and schedule those live training sessions in your Recoma customer portal by going to customer.recoma.com. I've put that link down in the description below. If you're interested to learn more about digitizing but don't have a software in mind yet, we do offer a free trial for our Chroma digitizing software. You can download a copy down in the links below and try it out for yourself. If you found this information helpful, make sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel to keep up to date with the latest information in the world of decorated apparel. Don't forget to follow us on all of our social channels down below. We're very active on Instagram and on TikTok for some entertaining content. Last but not least, if you haven't done so already, make sure to join our free Facebook group, Embroidery and Custom Apparel Mastery, where there's now over 30,000 apparel decorators in there sharing their tips and tricks of the industry, and you can be a part of the conversation. Thanks again for watching, and we'll see you next time.